Hi, everyone. Welcome to another amazing, amazing topic of conversation. As our first year's conversation, I really want to thank our sponsors, the Health Channel. You want to live a you want to live a healthy lifestyle. Subscribe to their newsletter. Also, Finkelman's for the chef in you, and our new sponsor, Alexa's Workspaces. We have co-working offices, virtual, a lot of choices. And from the Power of the Heels Foundation, we're back to our networking, our monthly networking at the AC Hotel in Aventura. And please register. Our next one is January 12th at 8.30 in the morning. So welcome, Dalit. I, am, I wanted to talk about today as we're starting a new year. I was inspired by a lot of the messages that I got for new year. And there were some that really caught my eye. Such as? It, it was more of a spiritual wish than the normal well wishes. So it was wishing you self-discovery and improvement. And what about that spoke to you? Well, the self-discovery was very interesting because uh, we start the year with goals. We start the year with everything we want to do. And the biggest misconception is that, yes, we're going to go on a diet. We're going to do exercise. And by the third day, we drop everything and we forget. But it was about self-discovery. So I thought it was, okay, this year is about what I want. That's what others want. And that is the reason that I wanted to share with you from the spark within and your thoughts about a more spiritual message as we start 2023. So first, let me say, first of all, Happy New Year to you and everybody listening. Um, I think that 2023 is going to be my gut instinct, my intuition tells me that 2023 is going to be a very interesting year for individual growth and individual discovery. And every individual on this planet post COVID, I think is going to really start to examine their life very closely and make some changes. Now, that being said, in my teaching of meditation, I am a huge proponent of mindfulness, um, staying in the moment, being present in the moment, being aware, observing and noticing the moment that we're in, allowing life to flow and accepting the life that we are being offered in the moment. And from that space, I don't love the word goals or self-improvement. I think it puts a lot of pressure on us. And I think that it can happen more naturally and more peacefully without putting the pressure or the guilt or the judgment or the labels on us if those goals don't materialize. Sometimes when we're so intent on one goal, we don't, we narrow our focus our mind, our hearts, our souls, our bodies into one narrow focus and we miss everything else that's going on around us. We miss opportunities. We miss what people are saying, what we hear in our own, uh, from our own nature. And I think it is a much more productive way is to stay in the moment, to be present to what's happening in this moment everything that you're thinking and feeling and hearing and smelling and tasting and approaching life from the moment instead of from a, a rigid goal or a label of self-improvement. But isn't also self-improvement like growth, like inner growth? It is, but as long as we don't label it or judge ourselves for not being where and who and what we thought we should be. Uh, very famous spiritualists have said stress and anxiety 
is being here, but wanting to be there and never really being happy with the here. And that's what mindfulness is. Mindfulness is being in the here. It's being in the now. It's being in this, the present moment and operating from the present moment, opening yourself up to the awareness of what's happening in your life right in that moment, what you're experiencing and going from there rather than just having a goal and marching towards it without taking into effect everything around you and within you. Having a mindset of that's my goal. That's where I'm going. That's where I want to be. And sometimes it's okay to question it. Maybe that really isn't the goal. But Instead, wait a second. Wait, one second. I'm going to give an example. I'm going to start a diet on the first. And I'm going to start a diet. I'm going to lose, my, lose weight. Instead of maybe, how does my body feel? Making peace with your body. Loving your body as it is in this moment. I'm not saying to eat unhealthily or to eat junk food. What I'm saying is that to take a moment and see, is this goal really what I want? Do I really want to lose weight or do I really want peace with my body? Do I really want peace in the moment? And yes, maybe weight loss will come if I feed my body better, if I nurture my body, if I nourish my body, but out of love for my body, not out of hate for my body. Do you see the difference? The goal is not weight loss. The goal is in this moment, I love my body. In this moment, moment I wanna nurture and nourish my body. What, what can I do to do that? In your point, and I see that coming from a loving side as opposed to the negative side of it is totally a very, I'm going to, it's going to sound right now, but it's, it's a positive way of thinking. But if you, but there are people that are really focused on their goals. Like this is what I want to achieve. This is where I want to be. This is where I want to go. And I have, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm not saying there is, there is as in Christianity, there's a beautiful saying that there's grace in action which means that there is beauty and grace and merit in taking action and moving towards your goals. What I'm saying is number one, reevaluate your goals and really using the right terminology for your goals. Inst again, instead of losing weight, nurturing and nourishing my body with the best choices for me in this moment. But is that's part of the self-discovery. Right. And that's action. You are taking action because you are asking yourself, what is the best action I can take right now to nourish, nurture, and love my body? Right? You're taking action, but you're doing it from a place of love and openness. Let's see what comes to me instead of I'm only going to eat broccoli and chicken breast. It's two yeah. different approaches. It's just two different approaches. One of them is softer more mindful, more present, more loving. And one of them is rigid goal-making with the objective, which is rigidity. So if there was, if you could tell someone or all of the people that are listening to us, what would be your message for the year to come? to live in the present moment, to be aware, noticing and observing what is happening around you, to listen mindfully, to speak mindfully, to take a moment before you answer, um, to really be present in that moment and see what is happening around me and within me. How can I further my objectives? How can I self-discover? How can I grow? How can I meet goals, but in a kind, loving, mindful way. Allowing life to flow to you and through you instead of you barreling through with your mindset of I've got to get here, I've got to get there. Allowing there to be more of a flow, a peace, a love, an acceptance of what the moment is. But we all know that we've come a long way since 2019. Like 
the past two years have been years that we couldn't control anything. We just had to let it be. And it has been, this year has been a lot of turmoil, a lot of division, a lot of negativity, a lot of hate speech. How do we turn off that noise and just go through a, a path of, of mindfulness? Like really, really taking in the positive side and canceling all the negative that's going on. Allow me to teach you meditation. <laughs> meditation is the answer because when you meditate, meditation is not just a formal sitting down every day of 15, 20 minutes, closing your eyes and going into a trance, which some people think meditation is. Meditation is about living every moment of your life in a place of awareness, observance, noticing, mindfulness. And if you do that, everything begins to flow. There's a calmness, there's a peace, there's an acceptance. And I know that I keep using the same words over and over, but that truly is what it is. And when I teach meditation, I teach it on two different levels. One of them is creating a consistent everyday meditative practice where you do sit and close your eyes and go into a meditative place for five, 10, 15 minutes, whatever, whatever is comfortable for you. But then also using meditation as a tool to live your life every moment of your life. So I'm gonna tell everyone that's listening that LEAD actually guides and teaches meditation to the girls of the program of the Loving Me More. And when we did a survey, 100% of the girls was like, the thing that they liked the most was the meditation which is really one of the most beautiful compliments I think I've ever been paid in my life. I, that touched me for days. I thought about that. That was really just so special. And, and I really want you to share with everyone the breathing. Okay. Because you also have, uh, I want you to share the story of the person that you were helping when you, in your past life, when you were a lawyer. Uh. Ah. Oh boy. And, that, and what and the breathing and what led you to to all this because right. I think this is a really nice message that we can leave everyone with I so I told this to the girls and it's actually in my blogs I wrote a blog about it as well but very briefly I've been studying I've been meditating for 40 years and studying meditation for about 40 years um and about 10 years later or 30 years ago, um, I, lived in the, I lived in Asia for two years, traveling through Asia, studying uh, meditation. And I came back and I was attorney. I was an attorney, I was a criminal defense attorney. And a couple of weeks after I came back from my trip, um, I was assigned a case. And he was this big, burly, violent looking man. Um, and when I went to jail to interview him for the first time, I was wearing a necklace and on it, I had the symbol of Om, the Hindu word of Om. And as I was leaving, and we really didn't get anywhere. It was a very bad interview. He didn't want to talk to me. He didn't trust me. He didn't like me. Um, we did not connect or click. And as I was leaving, he pointed to that and said, what is that? So I told him what it was. And he said to me, well, what do you do with it? And I said, I don't do anything with it. It's just a symbol for me of my meditative practice. And he said, well, what does that mean? So I spoke to him about it for a few minutes. And I said to him, would you like to know more about it? And he said, no, I don't want to know anything about it. And I said, okay. Um, the next time I came to interview him to ask him certain questions that had come up during investigation of his case, he asked me another few questions. And I could see that he was really interested. And I said to him at the end, I've never taught meditation before. I've only studied it, but would you like me to give you some pointer, some information? And this time he said, yes. So long story short, for the next six months or so, while I was working on his case, I would go once a week or twice a week to the jail and I would teach him to meditate. So fast forward about six, seven months. And one day I went in um, and when I went to when I went to teach him to meditate, I would go in under the attorney 
uh, badge because that was the only way I could get in to see him. And uh, he came in in handcuffs with some scarring, some bruises on his face or on, on I believe on his uh, scalp, he had some bruising. And I said to the uh, guard, you can, hand, you can unhandcuff him. It's a lawyer client meeting. He doesn't need to be handcuffed. And the, and the guard said, yeah, he does need to be handcuffed because he was in a fight yesterday. So I asked him what had happened and he refused to tell me and he didn't say a word and we had our lesson and he went back to his cell. And I said to the guard, as he was escorting me to the elevator, I said to the guard, what happened? And he said, well, he's in handcuffs, but he kind of shouldn't be because the truth is he, it was a pretty kind of cool thing that happened. And I said, what do you mean what happened? So the story that the guard told me was that there was another inmate that had just gotten to the jail that he had a problem with in the outside world. They knew each other in the streets and they had beef. And when that other inmate saw the inmate that I was working with in the cafeteria, he started a problem with him and he took a tray and he hit him over the head and in the face a few times. And according to the guard and some of the inmates that were there, the inmate that I was working with raised his hands and was about to fight and then he stopped and he put his hands down and he just closed his eyes. And then after a few seconds, he opened his eyes and he said to the guard, I'm ready to go back to my cell now. So the next time I saw him, I said to him, I heard what happened. What happened, you know, I heard from the guard what happened. You tell me what happened. So he said, I was just about to go into fight mode when I remembered all of our lessons and I closed my eyes and I breathed and I became present in the moment and I became aware of where I was and who I was and what I wanted. I still tear up 30 years later, I still tear up every time I tell this story. Um, and he said, I breathed and I became aware and I became connected to the present moment and I didn't need to do anything but breathe. And that was my first student in meditation. I think that's a beautiful story because if you can get an inmate to stop from starting a fight just by being in the moment, by breathing, then we can do anything we want. That's right. And going back to what we were saying before, he did not have a goal to never fight again. So I'm gonna use this as an illustration to try and illustrate what I was saying before. He didn't have a goal, I'm never gonna fight again. No, what he did was he stayed in the moment, he stayed present. And in that he was watching and observing and evaluating what this moment was for him what? and what it could be for him. And he flowed. He flowed in the moment. He allowed life to flow to him and through him. He accepted the reality of this situation. And from his highest self, he came to a decision. And that and he was, took action. And he took action. So that's what I was trying. Actually, it was a perfect thing that you had me say this story because it's a perfect illustration of what I was saying before, that we don't need to be rigid in our goals. We just need to be in the moment. And with that, I leave you with a beautiful message of self-discovery. Mm -hmm. And action. Action. And awareness. Awareness and a really nice 2023 ahead. Absolutely. That's good for everyone. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And everyone. Until next week, and above all, stay safe. And hopefully 2023 will be in peace and no more wars. Globally and individually. <laughs>